happy for me. Patience, Mal. Patience. The woman looks out on the gently lapping waves. She seems totally at peace, but as you approach, she turns to you with a cheerful smile. I haven't seen you around here before. New? A prince, no less. Don't think I ever had the honor. Must be strange for you here among us poor folk. You here alone, Sir Prince? She gives you a long look. You've got a sharp tongue. Seems to me I hear a whole lot of bitterness and anger at the root of it, though. A sharp tongue's a poor companion, you know. You think twice about facing this mean world alone, eh? Someone to drink to in the evenings, someone to hold at night. If you've got those, you'll be all right. Some of us haven't got anyone at all anymore. Used to be I had a family, a husband, and a little boy. We were healers. Source was in our blood. Then they brought us here. I couldn't stop them from taking my boys from me when they did. Reckon they were cured. Maybe even released. Don't know why the Reds didn't take me too. Now I'm just waiting for them to call my name. Waiting and remembering. Poor fella. Can't imagine such a thing myself. Family's not supposed to do that. She looks out over the waves. For a while, the sound of them lapping on the beach is the only thing you hear. Don't we make for a fine couple? Here I am, pining over my family. Here you are, pining over yours. In such different ways, too. Her eyes sparkle. Kind of you to ask. Stefan? He was my little one, smart as a whip and no less wicked. And my husband, he was called Felix. He was an expert healer, could fix a broken bone in a short minute. She talks for some time about birthdays, about Felix's prickly beard, about the skunk Stefan once dragged home for a pet. Joy radiates from her as she remembers. She places a warm hand on your shoulder. What a gift to think of them. I'd like to give something to you, too. A family recipe. One of Felix's best. He'd be happy to know it went to such a, a warm soul. Take care of yourself, you hear? You're a sweet one, Sir Prince.
Slides in and out and in again. Here you are. I wonder what keeps you. Tell me your tale. We are unfamiliar, yet familiar. We are the same material, you agree? I am very curious. So tell me, tell me your tale. Start from the beginning. Start from where you come. I see, I see. Now tell me more. Tell me what you do. I understand. Now tell me how your story ends. You speak fiercely. You speak without fear. You are a warrior. A being of power and ever in need of it. Power comes from strength, and strength comes from growth. These seeds sprout, so does the iron in your spine. I give my word. It is nothing. Many fragments swell on my shore. See what I gather. Patience, Mal. Patience. Patience. Tides in and out and in again. Patience, Mal. Patience.
boring. The dog focuses at the cat at your feet, baring its teeth and growling. The cat's eyes are clouded and... What's going on? Oh, how pensively our shield looks down upon... Dear me! It has questions, Quirkus. Hmm? Why, yes, I suppose answering them is the polite thing to do. Speak! Shield! What are your queries? A giant body, but no giant brain, eh, Quirkus? Surely even the tall folk know that Rivalon was bare before the great Acorn fell from above and seeded the Erwood, covering this land in beautiful, perfect forests. Beautiful and perfect until the giant races... No offense realized they could use it to build their houses and fuel their fires. They carved the Erwood up, and the forests shrank and shrank. None of the original wood remains. But someday, the great acorn will fall again. The forests will be reborn, and the giant races will be wiped from this world. <clears throat> At least that's what I hear. Oh, Quirkus, it wants answers. As if it is the first creature to ponder the big questions of the universe. What tree did the great acorn fall from? Where did that tree come from, if not a greater acorn? Could you build a nest great enough to store the great acorn for the winter? Some questions have no answers. Quirkus, why is that so difficult to understand? The great acorn will come. It will destroy the world, and squirrels will reign supreme forever. I've... What do you say, Quirkus? We once believed it was good, but now... No, quite right. As terrible as the giants have been to us, we do not want to see them wiped out. Rather, we must find a way to live together in peace, giant and squirrel. Solora stops short, then shakes his head and pats Quirkus affectionately. Squirrels change, don't they, Quirkus? Priorities change. If we do not adapt, we are sure to perish. Face. Them scales won't won't save you. I'll punch your lights out. Those bleeding fools think think they run the place, but but I showed them. Sure, first always win. Second, never lose. What are you? Some kind of kind of idiot. 
Ah, the Queen's beard. It looks like you lost a fight with a claw hammer. Reckon you're in need of some to heal yourself up, eh? School of Hard Knocks, University of Life, Academy of this and that. I have the talent for it. And whenever I found someone with skill, I asked them to teach me. Instead of a potion, she hands you an empty bottle and a fat brown mushroom. I knew I saw some talent in you. Go ahead and combine the mushroom with the vial. Once you've mastered the technique, you'll never need help from a crusty old quack like me again. Business, Safi. Don't be profane. This is people's health we're talking about. And I get by just fine in the meantime, thank you kindly. Dane's as stubborn as an old steer. Says he don't believe in alchemy and won't accept a potion from me or anyone else. But Jack and Nip would rather die than drink something that ain't at least thirty proof. Still, my job ain't to judge but to heal. Or if that fails, to comfort. Seems that's all I can do for old Dean anymore. It's your ugly mug out of here. Is that thing eating corpses? The creature heaves through lips gummed with human gore. It turns to you with great effort, pain apparent in every movement, and madness screams from its wide, bloodshot eyes. You, 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 you. Quite lost. Quite lost. Quite lost. Careful, or they'll cross your wires. <laughs> now, a little query. Where grows the yarrow? Hmm? Quickly now, for I haven't much time. The creature gingerly takes the plant into his bloodied hands. He runs his fingertips over the white flowers. His panting breath slows. Darling, dear. Dear, darling child. Hello, Yarrow Girl. Can it really be you? The creature clenches the plant tightly. His breath quickens. He seems liable to lunge at you at the drop of a pin. You wouldn't understand. A father's pride. A father's love. The creature begins to weep. Fast, silent tears spill from his eyes as he clutches the little cluster of flowers to his heart. For you, my ring. Part of me. Name of Migo. Thank you. <laughs> it's been too long, my dear. Hmm. You, what? What it go? Name of Migo, come out of Arx. My daughter's a magister. Pretty haired Yarrow girl. She doesn't know about all this, though. Don't you dare blame her, pretty haired Yarrow girl. Told you, didn't I? They crossed my wires, hammer goes clang, and then the worms crawl in. Clang, clang, horrible old sadist. Filled my brain with holes. The devil lives inside her. Believe you me.
<laughs> it's been too long, my dear. Rubbish. Yarrow girl, you've grown, you have. <laughs> it's been too long, my dear. Amid the squalor of Fort Joy, you suddenly spot an elf with diamond features, regal and radiant, but cold too, and sharper than any knife. She was the one who sat rolling dice in the ship that went under, deciding fates with every roll, or so she said. Her eyes are focused on a lizard some distance away, and you get the distinct feeling he's an unfortunate man indeed to be trapped in her tiger-like gaze. No sooner have these words left your mouth than she turns about and grabs you in a stranglehold. You feel the tip of a long needle being pushed a little ways into your neck. You caught me off guard. No one catches me off guard. Better tell me who you really are, or this time I'll let my needle do the licking. A prince of the House of Slavers. You've just signed your own death warrant with that admission. A push, a pivot, and now you suddenly face her. The needle still all too deeply embedded in the side of your throat. Despite the precariousness of your situation, you notice something that remained undetected in the gloom of the ship. A flaw in her diamond features. A curiously shaped scar on her left cheek. It's dawning on you, isn't it? Why I hate... Reptiles like you. Here's the goods. But I do master with the heat of a million suns. She drives the needle in deeper and whispers. In truth, it does not matter in the least who you really are. You saw me mark my prey. You could warn him, save him, or kill him before I get my chance. That makes you a liability. That makes you needle feed. Never. You're a slaver, Prince. Why would I chain my fate to one like you freely, like I was once forced to? I hate to say it, but you make sense, fork tongue. Oh, little needle mine, what should I do? Push or pull? Hmm, the agony of choice. Hmm, 
You know what? Today is a rather fine day. Sunshine and an easy breeze. Yes, I'll let you live. I'll even agree to travel with you provided we talk to another lizard. The one I've had my eye on. I'm not quite sure the weather will save him. With a casual flick of the wrist, she withdraws the needle from your neck and smiles, as if she just invited you to sit down for tea. Let's discuss our respective roles then, shall we? You, me, and Death will be playing many a round of hide and seek. So, what role would you like me to play? As a rogue, my speciality is stealth, the quick silence of the dagger striking unseen. That said, I'm perfectly lethal wielding any weapon or magic. So, the choice is yours. Suits me fine. Lead on. Or better yet, let me take the lead. Then follow me. But wait. You seem to have quite a few followers already. We'll be far too conspicuous traveling in a caravan like that. Return to me once you've culled a couple. Is it not enough that you travel with me? Must you speak too? Go on then, bark away. Let's see if we- Well, I thought a brief swim in the sea, lying in the sun for a while, and maybe read a nice book. Or perhaps, and this is just a thought, we could find my mask and escape this wretched island. Oh, I think of them as little as possible. As much, I imagine, as you think of gadflies that buzz about you. Not that there is anything wrong with you, of course, just that you're, well, not all that impressive. Well, whatever helps you sleep at night. Regardless, further study will be required. In fact... The skeleton pulls a notebook from his robes and starts scribbling. After a moment, he pauses and looks back to you. Uh, uh, sorry, do carry on. Just act as you do in your natural environment. Simply pretend I'm not here. Ah, this is perhaps the first intelligent question you have asked. After all, one should always try to learn from one's betters. My people are a race far beyond anything that exists in the world today. We seek to master the secrets of the universe. We craft wonders to last through the ages, long after your crude tools have rusted to nothing. There is a great variety among our people, some are tall and lithe, others short and muscled. Some come in a variety of eye-catching colors. Others you can barely see at all. This is what makes you such an abomination, you see. You look almost exactly like every other lizard out there, just as every human looks like every other human. Walking through this world is as repulsively bland as staring at a wall for a century. After a while, the very sight of you disgusts me. Uh... No offense, of course. I... I do not know. There are rumors that some have been found at the Black Pits, an oil field on Reaper's Coast. I was trying to uncover the truth when I was waylaid by these magisters. But wherever the artifacts of my people are, I will find them. We have not simply vanished into thin air. No. No, I should not. Not yet. Not until I know what truly befell my people. And, after all, I am still here, despite the Void Woken's best efforts. The Mask of the Shapeshifter? In my time, it was nothing more than a novelty. A toy, really. I crafted one for my child once. She spent the day trying to convince me that she was her mother even though the face I used looked nothing like her. Of course, now that toy could be the difference between life and... Well, it makes a difference. With that mask, I can shapeshift and walk through this world looking like any other simple mortal. I could look like a lizard, a dwarf, a human, any creature whose face I can procure. It certainly makes traveling through towns easier. <sighs> Trust you bloody-minded beasts to turn a child's trinket into a wicked purpose. People like you are the reason it must be recovered. 
I am using the mask to keep myself safe from the violence of this world. Who knows what evil it could do in the hands of some mortal witch. Fear? Please. Why would I fear these creatures? It's a practical choice. Nothing more. Moving through this world is so much easier when you don't have to lecture some torch-wielding lunatics on the dangers of an open flame. Oh, it's quite simple. One just acquires a face, a source orb, and combines the two to make a face mask. Combining several of these single face masks along with a source orb will produce a mask of the shapeshifter. Frankly, I'm amazed everyone isn't doing it. Oh, of course there are. How many hundreds of thousands of you people have died over the years? Almost all of them seem to have been disposed of while still wearing perfectly serviceable faces. It's a terrific waste. Still, without the proper tool to remove the face from a corpse, I cannot take advantage of the many cadavers you're providing. So if you happen across anything that seems capable of ripping a face off a body, please do let me know. Ignorant! I dare say I have a better knowledge of this world than any creature living in it. Oh, I may be missing some social mores or be unaware of what king waged which war, but why nitpick? Your history is an interminably dull list of mortals that were born, achieved nothing of worth, and then died. Certainly one may have expanded his kingdom, or another invented some way of pickling fish, but what does it matter? Where will your kingdoms be in 100 years? In 1,000? They will all be dust, along with each and every one of your great heroes. Your people and nations come and go, mayflies screaming their importance at a universe that cannot listen. But the universe is always there. The laws that govern your states change over centuries, but the laws of the world even when my people walked this land, a dropped apple still fell to the ground. I have yet to see the mortal king that can decree all apples must fall up from their trees, or order fire to produce cold instead of heat. No, these laws stretch to infinity. Understanding them lets you understand the world. That is knowledge worth having. Everything else is arguing over who has built the prettiest sandcastle as the waves creep closer. Are you certain you want to dismiss your companion? Yes, I can imagine it might be somewhat difficult for you to forever be in my shadow. Go on then, play in the sun. I have actual work to do. What took you so long? I'm ready. You're not quite certain you'll ever sleep soundly with Sabeel in any sort of proximity, but at least she's on your side for the moment. Thank you. 
Better even to puke yourself to death than get purged, don't you think? The kin's brow knits together, then apart and back again. He seems to be swimming deep in his thoughts and doesn't look up as you approach. The ground. I don't know what you... I'm just trying to work it out. What happened? Why? Recognize you? Of course I recognize you. You're the Red Prince. That's about as obvious as a very obvious thing. Your point? My mind? What else, kin? I'm wondering why. All of this. Source. The Void Woken. The Divine. Why? Where's that, then? The egg. <laughs> we'll go back to the egg. Naturally. How could one not? We've used source for thousands of years. We have used it to heal, to grow. How can it be that it suddenly summons these, these horrors from the void? And when will Alexander ascend to divinity? We cannot continue like this. Now, now, let's not get nasty. Greet's better off, I'm sure. Keep my name out of your mouth, how about? Please, excuse us. You're talking to me, not him, Sam. Oh, for the love of Lucian, Balladeer. You're acting like a madman. Say it again. What you said about my wife, go on. Piss off. Go on, Sam. Well, it's the truth, and you know it. She's better off. So what if it was messy? I'd rather puke myself to death a thousand times than let the Reds get to me. If she were my wife, I'd be happy for her. A flat smile twitches across Balladeer's lips. She never did like you. <laughs> Wouldn't know a thing about you and I, Gretty. The man looks for a moment at the corpse at his feet, then turns back toward the nearly finished coffin, bloodied hammer in hand. Murder's a big word. And no, this here's a bed for someone a thousand times better than that snake. Rest of soul. The love of my life, Gret. She passed in the night. Something in the stomach. Doctor couldn't help her. He tenderly runs a hand along the coffin's side panel. If she were here, she'd tell me this plank is crooked. Chastise me for using warp wood on her final bed. Then she'd laugh and kiss me. Just here. 
The man holds a hand to his cheek for a moment. He turns from you, lines up another nail, and hammers it into the panel. thing about you and I, Gretty. Wouldn't know a thing about you and I, Gretty. I'll be with you soon, love. Wouldn't know a thing about you and I, Gretty.
I'll be with you soon, love. Bastard. I'll be with you soon, love. I'll be with you soon, love. Will source change better? There are no source. Yet so quickly, we find source so dangerous. What in his death caused it? So avoid what we attract us. What do you want, freak? He's inside. Behave yourself. If he don't like the looks of you, he's likely to rearrange your face. Make it quick. Hell if I know. Don't rightly know if it can be done. If they take the sauce out of you, what are you? Sure. Pelamai made it as far as the hollow marshes even. They dragged his corpse back the next day. Head pulled clean off by a ghost. I saw it myself. I never seen one myself, but me cousin up in Gore said one appeared from the clear sky one day and ate up every child under the age of 12. I don't know where they come from, but without the divine, there ain't much we can do to stop them. Hands out your pockets now. Menace round quick, eh? When another device a delivery, well, surely you'll have one. Back, please. What if there are no sorcerers? Scram! 
snake face. Yet so quickly, we find source so dangerous. Perhaps if those bleeding dwarves did need so much. Easy, hey? Women are attracted to source. But why? When another divine arises, will source change back? What if there are no sources? Heading into the kitchen? Don't try anything funny around Griff. I'm watching you. Perhaps if those bleeding dwarves did need so much. Ain't fit for beasts. Perhaps if those bleeding dwarves didn't eat so much. Perhaps ha! Cheeky! So What's your name? I'm Butter. Nice to meet you. <laughs> you think? I was raised by the whip, and I'm not afraid to use one either, especially not in here. Joining up with Griff's the closest thing you can get to security around here. Family, too. Till the Reds take you, anyway. Everyone talks a big game when they get here. Big games get smaller when you've got one of their weapons in your face, though. She laughs. The sound fills the air like the ringing of a bell. Now, wouldn't that be something? Look, I have an idea. I know we don't know each other very well, but time is so short and... and the connection is so rare. <laughs> if we get out of here, will you meet me again in Arcs? I don't care where you come from. Don't even care who you are, but I feel... a connection, don't you? So, you'll meet me? These strange times can't last forever. You'll meet me then. She leans forward and grazes your cheek with her lips. Until then. Nice and slow. Perhaps if those bleeding dwarves did need so much. Careful. Don't want to catch Griff in a bad mood. You looking for a match? You'll have a good head on most of the competition, that's for certain. A <laughs> good tail, too. Poor lugs won't know what hit them. Nothing I can tell you you can't find out by slipping down that hatch. If you've got the spit in you, that is. Then be. Don't make me say it again.
if a magister finds this on you. You forget my name, here. Take your coin, then. Listen, I can help you if you just... Shut up, elf. This clown caught him stealing from my kitchen. <clears throat> Still won't say where he stashed my supplies. Sound like someone you'd let off with a slap on the wrist. Supplies. A crate of food. Citrus in particular. <laughs> he'll talk or he'll die quiet. All I want is my supplies. <clears throat> Happy to let this clown die in a gutter instead of my kitchen. Bring back my crate and you got yourself a deal. Ain't been here long, have ya? <clears throat> no one gets to have it all. No one starves anyone else. He twirls his knife between his fingers. Divine's gone. This blade is the only god watching over Fort Joy. Worse than war rations, these. Light in your trunk, ain't ya? Who could blame you with the garbage they got for sale round here? the beasts. Some more rations, these. Perhaps if those bleeding dwarves didn't eat so much. Ain't fit for beasts.
Why don't you take a gander at the goodies I got? Stuff you won't find anywhere else in camp. Procured by special means. Boss don't mind where the gold comes from. Long as he gets his cut. Have a look, why don't you? Your cash is plenty good here. <laughs> Fend for yourself, then fork tongue. I'll take what I want after the Reds get to you anyway. Haven't got shanked through the gills yet. Give it time. Now. 